Uh, my next question, which only sort of is about a subject that I didn't even know existed, but I have a friend who wrote a book about it and feels very passionate about it. This friend says, and now I saw an editorial recently in the Times, that all these foundations are nothing more than rich people's toys, and of course, we're all here in the art world, you know, and you're talking about such great deeds. I feel really solidly about, and I see this around the table too, about the charitable purposes. Like we have funded over a thousand artists directly. We have worked with thousands more and we have an artist in residence program in New Orleans. And to me, uh, if it is a tax avoidance strategy, it has some incredible benefits. For the public uh, and especially in the u.s where uh, we don't have a state system of supporting the arts uh, this is sort of the the monster that was born in some manner uh, and i feel really strongly that that our community of artists and definitions is doing spectacular work so anyway the teacher's teaching the class and there's a woman around 35 in the class and she's doing collages and she begins to weep and the teacher gets very upset. Is this woman having a nervous breakdown? What's happening? And the teacher goes over to her and says, are you okay? And the woman can't stop sobbing. And then she says to her, what can I do? And she said, no, no, everything's okay. It's just, this is the first time in my life anybody ever asked me to express myself about anything. And that, to us, became a real energizer. That's what really focused us on this idea of that you can make people's lives better through art. And this is something that was very dear to Motherwell, who was a pioneer in teaching art as a form of self-realization. Um, Janice at the time was uh, a, one of the biggest galleries in the world. It was a staff of six people. Three of them were Janice. <laughs> <laughs> So, so for the three of us who weren't Janice's, we had a lot of work to do, <laughs> and, and we did, and we learned a lot. I certainly learned uh, a lot about uh, how an organization like that works. Dick uh, Bellamy was, uh, at the end of his life, his office was at Mark's studio, and um, so he was there on a daily basis with Mark, and um, I think certainly for in certain years, Dick was the person for whom Mark made art. Uh, and I think Paula uh, also, it has, I mean, Paula, they're temperamentally very different people. Obviously, Dick was crazy, like Mark was crazy, but in a different way. I think Paula, he relies on for, I think, a lot of ways, sanity. I mean, she is, uh, you know, so professional, so understanding Mark, he so respects everything that she does. And he really relies on it.